Well, hello, God bless you, Bishop Patrick L. Wooden Sr. here, a.k.a. also known as the Sanctified Preacher. <laughs> hey, did you see the convocation? Did you see the convocation? Well, before I get to that, I pray that you're having a wonderful day, and I pray that God is blessing you, and I'm still rejoicing from the Holy Convocation, how the Lord blessed us on last week, and then when we got back to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ this past Sunday morning, uh, the evidence that the revival was yet going on was all in the air. The Lord met us in a mighty way, and here I am inviting you to join me tonight. Now, you know, if you watched that reference to uh, the sanctified preacher is what the presiding bishop, presiding bishop J. Drew Sheard called yours truly when he was here to close out our holy convocation on last Friday. And uh, we're still getting calls from that. And we thank God for the move of God that took place all last week and what the Lord is doing in us. My friends, listen, the God of the Bible is moving by his spirit. He's moving throughout the world, and I'm glad to be on the Lord's side. I'm glad that my heart is fixed and my mind is made up, and I'm going to serve the God of the Bible and stand on his word as long as I live or till he comes, whichever one comes first. But I have a passage I want to read to you today, and... Uh, I want this to sink in and I'm because, you know, I'm here to invite you tonight. I'm inviting you. I'm going to be here myself and delivering the word of the Lord. And I want you with me. But in John's gospel, chapter number 17, our Lord said something powerful that I felt led to share with you today. The Lord said this in what is called his intercessory priestly prayer. Jesus is talking to the father. Jesus is about to go back to the father. He's praying on our behalf. He's interceding for us. And he said this uh, concerning us. He says in verse 15, I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from uh, the evil. When Jesus was praying, well, why don't I read verse 13 down through 15 to give you a little better thought? He says, and now I come to thee. Jesus is about to go back to the father. And uh, these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in them. I'm saying this, that the saints might have my disciples, my followers might have my joy fulfilled in them. I have given them thy word and the world hath hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, verse 16 says, even as I am not of the world. And listen, my friends, this is the prayer that Jesus prayed for us, for you, for me, that God would keep us in the world, that God would not take us out of the world, but keep us from the evil that is in the world. Now, one of the major concerns that I have as a man of God, as a, ba as a pastor, as a bishop, as a, a husband, as a father, as a grandfather, as just an observer of the times, I notice that it seems to me that uh, the problem is not the church being in the world. The problem seems to me uh, to be that much of the evil that is in the world is making its way into the church. And I believe that it is uh, the true church. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ, and I'm not speaking denominationally now, whether you're a Baptist church or holiness church or four square Pentecostal, whatever, church of God in Christ, whatever, the true church of the Lord Jesus Christ, regardless of denomination, will be that church that finds a way to stay true to the God of the Bible, uh, 
to stay true to the Savior, to stay loyal to him, and to resist the temptation uh, of uh, allowing the, the world and all of its ways and its ideologies and its teachings to make their way in to the, the church. And, uh, and listen, one of the ways that Satan is working his way into the church is that Satan has infiltrated traded uh, seminaries, universities, college campuses, places where preachers meet and gather. Satan is infiltrating. And I want to say to the preachers who are watching out there, hey man, keep it simple. Preach the gospel. Our enemy is the devil. Our enemy is sin. Our enemy is the, the enemy. Uh, your, your enemy, my, my, my white brother, is not that black guy. Your enemy, my black brother, is not that white guy. Our enemy is the devil. And the things that God calls sin are still sins today. And we've got to stand on the word of the Lord and preach the word of the Lord and not allow the enemy to sidetrack us. Now, this advertisement tonight, this invitation is speaking to some preacher out there because the devil Level. They're trying to reel you in. Some of your buddies, some of your friends, you know, they want you to be like them. They want you, you, you want to fit in. You know, it's natural for every person to want to be accepted. You don't want to stand alone. You don't want to think that everybody's out there talking about you and all that kind of thing, stuff, and you're not fitting in, and he's not one of us and all that. Let me tell you, that's garbage. That's garbage. They're fickle. They're ch they'll be with you today and they'll be against you tomorrow and they'll be back next week. That's the way it is. But God's word never fails. And God's man, God's woman, God's preacher is going to stand on the word of the Lord. And if you are a preacher out there and the world loves you, the world, that floating mass of ideas and thoughts, speculations, doctrines, and teachings, the world, a floating mass, did you hear me, of ideas, thoughts, speculations, teachings, and things of that nature that's contrary to the word of God. If the world loves you, then that means you're of the world. But for those of us who stand on the word of God, the world hates us, the political system hates us, Oh, these uh, uh, these uh, powers that be, they despise us because we're here to remind the world and to show them how sinful they are and to declare a spade, a spade, to declare God's truth with power and authority and without apology. And I am going to be talking about it tonight. And I want you to join me right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ for Bible study. <laughs> it's been a little while since I've gotten a chance to do that. Yes, I'm excited about studying the word of the Lord and talking to you and encouraging you to uh, listen, to remain steadfast. Listen to me. Unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord. Doesn't matter who pushes against you. Doesn't matter what people say. Be ye therefore steadfast, unmovable, always abounding, Paul says, in the work of the Lord. Listen, for as much as you know, and you got to know this, you got to know this, you got to know this, that your labor is not in vain, in the Lord. It's not in vain. God sees, God knows, and God is going to bless you real good for standing for him. So I'll see you tonight right here at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, where we're going to study the word of God together, and you're going to you're going to leave stronger than you were when you came. And if you are out there and it's impossible for you to be here um, physically, then uh, tune in 
and, and thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for all that you do. We have some of the most wonderful and, and Brother Garrett, some of the most loyal supporters who pray for me, who stand by us, who support this, this ministry and this work. And I do thank you. And uh, as a, just a little update on, on the campaign, we're working hard. And we are, as you know, a candidate for the general board of the church of God in Christ. The church that I believe is the greatest church in the world that God has uh, positioned us in a unique place uh, at this time in human history to do the work of the Lord. And all we got to do is just do it and speak up and God will bless you. The particular passage, when people ask me, they say, wouldn't, how's the campaign going? I always tell them this. I'm operating from 1 Kings chapter number 20 and verse number 11. It says, and the king uh, of Israel answered and said, tell him, let not him that girdeth on his harness boast himself as he that putteth it off. That is, let not the man who's going out there to fight talk like he's already won the fight. Well, when you ask me how we're doing, well, we're working hard. And all we want is the will of the Lord to be done. Uh, the, the vote's not till November. I don't count one because not one has been cast. But I believe that the uh, I'm believing for God's will. I believe that's the will of the Lord for us to be a part of uh, the general board. But time will tell. I'll tell you this, I'm going to serve him to the day I die, regardless. And I've said this before, and I'll say it again. Hopefully, prayerfully, holiness will put me on the board. Or holiness will protect me from it. But either way, I'm going to be holy. So I'll see you tonight, right here at the Upper Room, Church of God in Christ. Join me. Join me, join me for second drum roll, Bible study. Third one. <laughs> Been a while. I love you. I'll see you tonight.